Hi, I'm going to show you how to reformat or format a new or existing portable SSD card, in this case the Samsung T7. Now my motivation here was because the T7 has proprietary software which means it can't be used on Unix based operating systems. So what I've done is I've plugged it into my Mac and because it's already set up it's got a partition on there, it's got some data on there and it's already security locked but I want to make it accessible on any machine so I'm going to enter my password to access this drive and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the security settings. Now if it wasn't detected and didn't pop up then you can use that PSSD icon which is the software installed from Samson to activate and access your drive as I'm showing here. And what we're doing here is we're security mode, we're switching off. This is now an unlocked drive it's no longer encrypted and if it's plugged into a Windows machine or another Mac you'll be able to access it like a normal drive. You'll also be able to now see it on Unix based systems. Now although I'm demonstrating here with a T7 what I'm showing you applies pretty much to solid state and classic hard external hard drives. So now that we've unlocked it and it's now recognizable as an XFAT file system we're going to plug it into my Unix based box and I'm running a variant of Ubuntu called Pop OS which I highly recommend and as you can see it's been picked up straight away and we can open it with the files and we'll see that there is some data in there. Now this is a destructive process so I've already backed up all this data elsewhere we're going to basically be wiping the disk clean and in order to do that we're going to bring up disks. Now although I'm demonstrating this on Pop OS you could actually do this step on a Windows machine or on a Mac machine it would be very simple. What we're seeing here is the main partition and I'm going to delete that partition and it's saying obviously are you sure you're going to lose all the data that's fine we've already backed it up somewhere else. The goal here is to make this disk usable on any machine and therefore getting rid of the proprietary installation that Samsung has put on it. So following the steps I'm going to give it a volume label and you can pause and look at the different options um, that I'm going to go through. So effectively what we're going to go here is we're going to choose other and we're going to go for X FAT. Now the original FAT file system is not really suitable for large volume external disks. It's really only good up to a few hundred meg of um, USB drive really. So we're going for X FAT and that should be accessible on any system. If you complete this step you've now got an external hard drive that can be used on Windows, on Mac and on Unix. But what I'm going to do in the next bit is show you how you can then encrypt it using free, freely available open source software that runs on all of those systems so you can effectively have a fully secured locked external hard drive which is perfect for example if you're jumping between your Mac and your Windows machine and your um, Ubuntu box or your Pop OS or whatever. Uh, a great way of transferring data and making sure that if your drive is lost that it is totally encrypted so you're not going to have your security compromised. So what we've done there is we've effectively formatted this and it's now available as a standard external drive and I'm now opening Vericrypt V-E-R-A-C-R-Y-P-T and we're going to create a new volume on this disk now, if you want, if you know you're going to do this, you can bypass the previous step once you've unlocked your T7 or your ex whatever external drive you've got. You can actually skip the formatting step because the Vericrypt process is actually going to reformat it again. Okay, so that that can speed things up. So you can see all the different options. What we're doing is we're finding the disk here that we're going to do the um, Vericrypt installation on. And I'm just making sure it is the right one. So you can see there it's just shy of a thousand gigabytes. And this is important. Basically, just click yes. And this is not the password to encrypt the disk. This is my password on the system because we're going to be doing stuff at root level. Okay. So again, it's saying you're going to lose all your data. Just as before we've already backed everything up but this is a destructive process so if you want to keep your data you do not want to go and proceed with this. Now there's a whole load of encryption options I just go with the standard ones and this is where we put in the password that is going to be used to encrypt this drive. 
So whenever you use this drive in the future, you'll be asked for this password and, and that will be on Windows, on Mac, on Unix. So make sure you choose a good password and click next. Now this is kind of preempting which kind of operating um, which kind of file system we're going to put on this but we're going large files if you said no it would probably go with fat so here's the option and again we're going to go x fat and do a quick format because we've already formatted it i don't want to waste time um, if you do a full format it will take about six hours and this is saying look i will mount this on other platforms so it's not going to be restricted to a linux kind of build and this is the interesting bit we're now generating a random key and I've fast forwarded this uh, 10 times the speed because as you move around, note the mouse doesn't leave the window. It only counts when you're on that window. The random movements of your mouse generate a random key. And when it's when the bar, the randomness uh, collection from mouse movements is full, you, you hit the format button and there we go. We are done. We have now created a, a, a password encrypted volume. So how do we use it? Well, we select the device and then we mount it from the Vericrypt software. So we put in that password that we created to encrypt it here. Hit OK. And what it will do is it will decrypt the drive and make it presentable. And as you can see, it appeared on the top right. And it's also available in the dock and in the file system, which we'll click on now. Now, if it doesn't show up on the left, then click on other locations and you'll see it there. And it's shown it's an empty folder because it's, as you'd expect, it is a new drive, completely empty. But the key thing here is it's now encrypted. So on any machine that you want to access this drive, you just need to install Vericrypt, which can be installed on any machine and it's open source and free. And the kind of encryption that Vericrypt is using is the same kind of level of encryption that American agent, uh, government agencies use. So it's pretty secure stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to unplug it from the Unix machine and we're going to plug it back into the Mac. Now straight away, the Mac OS is going to say, look, I don't recognize this. What do you want to do with this drive? Just click ignore. That's good news. It means it doesn't know how to read it because it's encrypted. What we're going to do is we're going to open Vericrypt on our Mac and just as before we're going to choose a slot we're going to select the device and we have to put in the user password not the encryption password there's our device at the bottom so we're clicking the actual partition not the raw device and click mount enter the encryption password that we used hit OK and wait a moment and there we go it's mounted so you can see it on the top right and we can click on that and it will show us that basically it's an empty drive um, and again if you bring up finder for example then you will see that it's now visible on the left hand side but it's called on titled now if you want to you can rename it and again this step you could do in Mac you could do on the Windows machine you could do on the um, Ubuntu or Pop OS machine, but we're just doing it on the Mac here. So we've renamed it. And when you're finished with it, any mounted drive, remember to click that eject button, which I'm hovering over there. And then once you've ejected it, dismount it from Vericrypt using the dismount button. The reason being that when you eject the drive, the, the operating system will still know about it and you could remount it. But once you dismount it from Vericrypt, it's now encrypted again and no one can access it. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and wherever you are and whatever you're doing, God bless you.